Welcome to my channel. Today I will tell you about Italy's city of Venice, the capital of the Veneto region and one of Italy's most well-known towns. Venice is situated in the northeastern corner of the country on the Adriatic Sea. One of the most distinctive and romantic locations on the planet, it is a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Venice is a beautiful and amazing city. Its historic core is situated on 118 islands in the Venice Lagoon, and it is an amazing combination of winding canal alleys, numerous bridges, and the elegant architecture of opulent palaces and imposing churches. This waterside fairy tale city, which is advantageously dispersed across more than a hundred islands and connected by numerous bridges, is a real romantic haven. Here, you may stroll through the winding lanes where the lovely Casanova once strolled, ride in a chic gondola, and take in a brilliant sunset on the Venetian lagoon shores. In addition to all of that, Venice is home to numerous Renaissance palaces and architecture that are continual visual joy. In terms of architecture, history, and lifestyle, Venice is a unique city. It is known as the city on the lake, the epicenter of masquerade culture, the home of Antonio Vivaldi and Marco Polo. Despite the fact that it has the highest accommodation, food, and even transportation costs, it nevertheless attracts over 18 million tourists every year who fall in love with Venice at first sight. What an amazing place! And why does it act like a magnet, attracting travelers from all over the world? Venice is unique in that it is located on the mainland and 118 small islands, which are connected by waterways. In terms of administrative division, Venice has only six districts. Each of them has its own government. An interesting detail about the gondola, if you look closely, you can see six cogs, commonly called ridges, on the nose of the gondola. Thus, each cog represents a different district of the city. The cultural and museum capital of Italy in the open air is Venice. Each structure here is priceless, and each boulder holds a myth. Venice's population is dwindling quickly. There are many causes for this, but the primary one is the high expense of living in cities and housing in particular. The Venetians themselves, on the other hand, aren't in a rush and favor a slower pace of life to a faster one. They maintain order in their life and uphold tradition, much like the tranquil Venetian canals. Today, Venice is faced with a new conundrum. On the one hand, tourism is the only source of revenue, but on the other, there are so many visitors that people are now reduced to serving tourists. Add to this the reality that the city is progressively submerging, and it makes sense why the locals would be unhappy. Even today, only a certain number of tourists are permitted in Venice. Additionally, there are numerous restrictions, such as the ban on selfie sticks, as well as two different price ranges for locals and visitors. However, even these obstacles do not deter intrepid travelers and enthusiasts of beauty from visiting the opulent C.A. Doro castles, the Doge's Palace, the romantic Bridge of Sighs, and the oldest Bridge Rialto, and the Murano neighborhood. Before you leave, you should estimate how much money you will need for the trip. When deciding when to visit Venice, you can focus on any day except November and December. During this time, Piazza San Marco is covered in knee-deep water due to flooding in the city. But pictures taken during such a trip will not go unnoticed either. At other times of the year, when it's not oppressively hot and searingly humid, Venice is stunning. The weather and air quality are perfect for long hikes. Also, try to book your accommodations at least three to four months in advance if you want to attend the Venice Carnival, which takes place in February. In Venice, there are a number of private bridges where sitting, walking, and taking pictures are absolutely prohibited. Private bridge signage make this clear. Trespassing on someone else's property would be deemed to be present here. What must a visitor do while in Venice? Take a picture with pigeons in Piazza San Marco, the Doge's Palace and the Bell Tower of ST. 
Mark's Basilica dominate the main city plaza of Venice, which is also crowded with hundreds of tourists and pigeons who have adapted to the environment. A police officer is strictly on the lookout and has the authority to issue a fine if someone is caught feeding pigeons. Wander off on a walk. Trust your fate rather than your guide as the streets of Venice resemble movie sets with their endless bridges across canals, historic palazzos, and charming courtyards. Sip some wine at the neighborhood tavern. Although there won't be a table for two or a nice menu, you will be given genuine Italian wine. You can enjoy travel by sitting on the stone steps and staring out at the canals. View Venice after dark. When you leave the house after midnight, the city is a completely different place. Instead of traffic and noise, there is only silence, splashing water, and couples in love. Visit an antique store. Forget about purchasing the typical trinkets like Chinese-made masks and magnets. Do you desire to bring the city's vibe home with you? Visit the antique shops. Reach the top observation platform by climbing. The Fondaco dei Tedeschi, Scala Cantarini del Bovolo, and Campanile della Chiesa di San Giorgio Maggiore all provide breathtaking views of the city's major architectural ensembles and canals in addition to San Marco's Bell Tower. On the Canal Grande, ride a gondola. It would be a mistake to be in a port city and not use the water transportation. You can order an Italian slam performed by a gondolier and feel the happiest person in the world. If the expense of a gondola ride, 80 to 100 euros, is out of your price range, take the Vaporetto, the city's public transportation. They are compact vessels. Purchase a round-trip ticket to see every famous site at once. Satiate your inner foodie. Italy is renowned for its spaghetti and pasta in addition to its pizza. A traditional food to try is polenta, which is created from cornmeal. It is served at celebrations and lunch. Remember to sample the sacchetti, bicoli cookies, tortino with prunes, and tiramisu. Venice is the origin of this delectable treat. You must have gelato if you get a chance to enjoy the Bellini cocktail which is made of white wine and peach puree. Yeah, Ice cream yeah, comes in more than 500 varieties. It's delicate, delicious, and only contains natural ingredients. Venice has a beach on land that goes by the name Lido, which is an Italian word for the coast. Locals will be spending weekends or lunch to the Manhattan, but tourists rarely visit. Since the late 19th century, it has been a popular vacation spot drawing writers like Byron, Goethe, Shelley, and even Thomas Mann, who penned his scandalous novel Death in Venice there. Long and sandy, the nearby beaches are always crowded during the summer, especially on weekends or in the evenings when Venetians rush to cool down in the Adriatic after work. The recommendation is to swim early in the day while everyone is still at work. To travel to the Lido terminus from any Grand Canal stop, it just takes a few stops, for example, three or four stops from San Marco. You should walk straight through the entire island after leaving the port to get at the beach in five minutes. The second choice is to rent a bike on Lido. The island is 12 kilometers long, and there is a lot to see. Subscribe and like my channel. I'm happy to try for you. See you in the next video.